In this video, we're taking a look at the Shanling Q1 Digital Audio Player. What's cracking, audio fans? David here from Prime Audio Reviews. Let's get started. As you can see, I don't have a box here. That is because this was a pre-production unit. I've had it for about a month already now, but it's just being launched, I think tomorrow on Kickstarter, where it will be available for everyone at a super good price. Make sure you check that out. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, a little bit of background, the development of this player, the Q1, started in uh, August 2018, I believe it was. And yeah, up until now they've been working pretty hard at it and it's finally ready to come to market. Let's have a look at the exterior here. You've got a 2.7 inch display. Uh, I don't recall the resolution, but it's nice and clear. We'll see that when we turn it on in a minute. The, uh, the ever-present Shanling wheel, slightly improved from previous versions. It's got a bit more resistance and it's got a bit more uh, knobbly bits on there that give you extra grip. Feels really nice. Nice solid clicking action too. Here on this side are the playback control buttons, your forward, previous, play, pause. And on the bottom, uh, USB Type-C port. 3.5 millimeter headphone out and a micro SD card. And that's all there is to the front and sides here on the back. Boom, lovely, lovely. The one that I've got here is a kind of a, it's a mauve, it's a sort of a purple color. In fact, to uh, accommodate these new colorways, Shanling had to develop a uh, brand new manufacturing process and it's really paid off because when you see this in, in person it feels amazing and it looks fantastic it's it's kind of like it's kind of like a paint job on a on a luxury car that's that's what it feels and looks like it's beautiful compared to the glass back of the M5S here it might not look as flashy, but if you got one of these, you'd probably got it in a case anyway. My case is downstairs at the moment. Oh, by the way, each, each Q1 player will come with a silicone case uh, in matching color, depending on whatever color you get. So keep that in mind. Again, because this is a pre-production model, I did not get a case, but I've been using this for, like I said, over a month now. Can't, can't really see any scratches or marks on it. It's held up really well. So kudos to Shanling, their new manufacturing process uh, really, really pays off. Now this little player here is in fact a direct descendant of the Shanling M0. It does have the same DAC chip inside, which is the Sabre ES9218P. It has almost the same amount of output power. But where the Q1 differs most from the Zero, from the M0, uh, is it has roughly double the battery capacity, or around 21 hours of playback time. And the other things, it's got the two inch display compared to this teeny little one and the physical playback buttons which the M0 does not have any of. So for comparison there's the M0, the Q1 and the Shanling M5S. Okay time to fire this up, give you a look at the operating system which is Shanling's M-Touch, M-Touch 3.0 
hold the button down. There we go. You'll see it boots up pretty quickly. It's not Android or anything. Now, this is the now playing screen. I'll get back to here in a minute. From any screen on the player, I might zoom in. So, from any screen on the player, if you swipe up, it will take you back to the home screen. So here, the home screen uh, menus, you've got my music, system settings, playback control settings, playlist, folders, folder browsing, my favorites, and there you go. What I really like uh, about this compared to the little MO is when you're browsing your music library, you can see all the options there. Yeah, when you're browsing the music library, you get album art, which this little guy does not do. So if I go into the My Music here and go to Album, you just get a text list and everything's truncated. Whereas here, is my brightness up? No, it's not. Whereas here, yeah, like I said, you get the album art, fantastic. Just like the, just like the M0, the Q1 has got, oops, oops, help me. Uh, the Q1 has got a nice responsive operating system, there's no lag. The, for some reason the album art doesn't generate until you're actually on, you have that on the screen. I don't know why they do that, so probably just to save uh, resources and memory, things like that. But nice and smooth. Lovely, lovely. Let's go back to the now playing screen. So there it is. If you tap anywhere that's not, not a button, you get the full screen album art. Tap it again to come back. So here you got your play mode. You can add it to your favorites with this little heart button here. From here you can add it to a playlist, get your track information, or go to the now playing audio settings, which gives you access to, you know, gapless playback gain settings, equalizer, you can turn that on. You can actually have up to three, shit. Go back here again. Equalizer. You can actually have up to three custom EQ settings. And there are the presets. Super duper. I like to keep my EQ off. So you've got that screen. And on the third screen are the lyrics. If you have lyrics set up on your SD card, Obviously, I do not. So yeah, that's the basic playback of it. I'll give you a quick look in the system menu to get you give you an idea of what there is. Update library, Bluetooth settings. Uh, this player has bi-directional Bluetooth, so it can transmit and receive, which is great. It also operates as a external USB DAC, so you can you plug in the USB C, plug it into your computer or tablet. And it works as an external DAC, which is awesome. Brightness settings, your idle timer, USB mode, you can switch between uh, card reader and USB DAC. Set the date and time. Set the lock screen, which I'll show you as well. You can uh, set to double click to wake up the device. At the moment, I've just got it on single click. Oh, there's the lock screen. Just swipe to remove that. You can lock the buttons, which is what I did. Uh, yeah, actually, before we go any further, I will talk about the one little gripe that I have with this player. When you're holding it, well, I usually hold it, I like to hold it in my right hand like this. Can, can operate it easily with my left hand as well. It's a perfect size for that. Feels great in the hand, by the way. I forgot to mention that, it's beautiful. The weight is, uh, 
about 130 something grams. I can't recall the exact number, but it feels beautiful. Substantial in the hand, nice amount of weight to it. So yeah, really nice, feels premium. Now, where was I? So, if you're operating it with your right hand, I found that uh, I was really pressing these buttons on the side a lot by accident or unintentionally because they're quite easy to press. So we go to the now playing screen. If you, you're trying to press the wheel button here and you put a little pressure on the side, there you go, you've just stopped your music or skipped a song. And that was frustrating me quite a bit. So what I did, I went into the system settings and I went down to, I think I've gone past it, went to the buttons lock and here you can choose. Here you can choose uh, whether you want to lock the volume wheel only, the buttons only, or the volume and the buttons. And uh, but that's only when the display is turned off. So when the display is turned off, these buttons are locked now because of the way I have it set up. Personal preference, but yeah, really that's the only that's the only con that I can find with this player. I love everything else about it. Moving on, system, playback settings. So here, gapless again, equalizer, your gain settings, digital filters, got your usual linear fast, linear slow. I've got minimum fast on. Doesn't really make much difference. You, you might hear a very small difference. Uh, channel balance, play mode and folder skip. Then you've got your playlists and your folder browsing. So you can go in, check out all your folders like that. Uh, for some reason, you don't get the album art here, which is a little bit of a bummer. You only get that if you're browsing by album. That might change with firmware, I don't know. But yeah, All right, let's uh, let's get something plugged in here. These are the lovely, these are the lovely Shanling ME500 Platinum Editions, by the way. Really nice earphones. So go here play. Check your volumes up there. A nice little, I don't think you can hear it, but there's a nice little clicky action on the wheel. Feels good. Oh, I forgot. Another thing you can do is if you swipe down from the top, you get your, uh, what, what would you call them? The quick settings, I guess. Change your gain from low to high. Shortcut to the system settings, shortcut to the playback settings. You can select between phone out and line out. Of course, phone out is means, phone out means uh, variable level out and line out means fixed level line out. So for when you're sending, uh, want to send music to an amplifier or something like that. Quick uh, EQ on and off and quick access to turn on or off the Bluetooth. So yeah, what can I say? Uh, I really love this player. As much as I love the MO, I do like this more because look at, I mean my, my thumb is almost the size of the entire display on this one so it can be a little bit tricky to navigate if you have large fingers of course it's not as still not as easy to get around as the m5 here m5s but it's a big improvement over the over the tiny mo and i just love the way it operates it's beautiful and oh, i haven't talked about the sound of course, the sound is very similar to the MO. The output power, surprisingly, is, is almost exactly the same, almost identical between those. 
which is fine because this was actually this is actually a really powerful little player. It has more output power than the Fio M5. Yeah, so the sound really nice. It's got that classic Shanling, fairly transparent, fairly fairly neutral presentation. They don't really bump up the bass or the treble or anything. I found that this compared to the Fio M5, the Fio has a little bit more bass. Uh, the bass is a little bit more boosted, but here it's it's pretty much flat right across from bottom to top. It's very linear, very transparent, so it's nice and detailed. Uh, it's it's an uncolored sound, so what you hear is is what your transducers will do with it more so than the player itself. Whether you like that or not, that's up to you, but in my opinion, that is ideal. Now before I go, I just want to quickly talk about the pricing. When the, when the Kickstarter launch takes off, this will be available for $79. Can you believe it? 79 bucks. But that's only for the first 100 units sold. After that, they will be available for $89 still on Kickstarter, which is an awesome deal. I reckon it's the best DAP deal going at the moment. Probably the DAP deal of the year. $89 for this is just a steal. And then finally, when it shows up in the normal retail stores and things, the MSRP is $119, I think. So yeah, really good value. Fantastic DAP, just beautiful, beautiful to look at, beautiful to listen to. Crazy if you don't get one, if you, I mean, if you are looking to buy an entry level DAP, crazy not to get one, really. So that's all for this video guys, if you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want to see more reviews like this in the future, hit the subscribe button and until next time, see you later.